Welcome back to Reliable Sources. I want to turn now to women and television, and more specifically, women on television, anchor women, and how they dress. Check out this headline from the Huffington Post this week. This is the kind of BS that women in television have to deal with. The Huffington Post was talking about a morning show war over in Britain, where executives at one network were apparently so anxious to hike up the ratings, they suggested that their new anchor woman should hike up her skirts. The coverage of that controversy had me pondering how much change there's been in this country in the way television anchor women dress. So we've done an informal survey here, trying to see if there's a dress code among these women, and it sure seems like there's an arms race. Almost no one wears dresses with sleeves anymore. Let me start with Fox News. The new program, Outnumbered, features four women and one man, so it seemed like a good place to look. When we looked elsewhere on this network, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, we saw a lot of sleeveless dresses and shorter skirts than there used to be. You know, go back 20 or 30 years and you see a big difference. Is this a fashion choice? What kind of pressures do female journalists feel to look a certain way on the air? It actually came up on WABC, New York's ABC affiliate, right on Friday morning. Watch this. <laughs> our little microclimate in here is like a refrigerator. It's yes, cold yes, it is. In our microclimate, but our macroclimate, our yeah. big world out there, is the difference. Should we tell? Should we reveal to people how all the ladies here wear uh, sleeveless uh, outfits when it's only 37 degrees in this studio? <laughs> <laughs> well, the question like is, <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is what happens. I either a blanket camera. or a cardigan. Not like other. this, <laughs> shivering when we're on camera. <laughs> I've got the two perfect guests to discuss this very issue. Two generations of women in television news. Kieran Chetri, she's a former CNN and Fox News anchor, and Judy Woodruff, co-anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. Welcome to you both. It's great to be here. Hi, Brian. Are we perfect because we're both wearing sleeveless? <laughs> Which is not intentional. That's the perfect place to start, actually, I, I think. I, Judy, we didn't I wonder... know this ahead of time, by the way. <laughs> well, I wonder, because you were here at CNN for many years, how have you seen the attention to female anchors' outfits change over the years? Well, let me just tell you, when I was a local news reporter and then anchor in Atlanta, I wore a blazer that on the pocket it said Action News 5. <laughs> So we've come a very long gray blazer, very attractive, maroon lettering. No, see, we have come so far. It takes so the guesswork out of choosing your words. So far, exactly. I guess so. There are days when I've longed to have a blazer to pull out of the closet. But we have come so far. I mean, I think what happened in, in, in uh, London is, is outrageous. But, but think about it. It's Back then, people were openly discriminating against women. Kieran, you brought some notes with you, all of the different things you have been told over about the how year. to dress said, over the years. When you years. talked, when you called and said, you know, do you want to come join us to talk about this? I laughed because I just started thinking, and I don't think it's actually changed that much. I mean, obviously, we have come far in terms of um, assignments that was unheard of back in the day that you'd have a female war reporter, you know, before, I mean, Christiane Amanpour was the trailblazer, but now, you know, it's, it's just as common. I think that, and you can tell me if you think I'm wrong about this, but I think that attention to women's appearance, I think that it's not just news. I think that that's just sort of society, mm -hmm. and we can take it with a grain of salt, or we can get very insecure about it. But I laughed over the years. Um, people said I should buy a wig, which I'm actually thinking I probably should have because my hair was too thin for television. They didn't like that. And then I was told, don't wear bare arms. But Michelle Obama changed that for all of us, by the way. That's, that's how that changed. She ah. was the first one to go sleeveless. That's right. <laughs> don't wear taupe. Uh, dye your hair blonde. Wear your skirts shorter. Wear your skirts longer. Um, don't wear pantsuits. They said get Botox because when you report and the sun's on you, you look angry. And nobody likes angry women on television. It's harder because you're trying really hard as a woman uh, to show that you know as much and that you deserve to be uh, informing people about what's going on. And then you have to worry about lip gloss and eyelashes and high heels and all of that stuff on top of it. I think it's tough because news is at the intersection of television. If you're if you're doing news on television, you're at the intersection of an what is in large part an entertainment medium. Yeah, it but there's also the Venn diagram, right? Exactly. Of journalism and television. And then and there's a lot in the middle. Exactly. And you're sitting right there in the middle of it, and there are plenty of guys doing the news. I mean, there are plenty. There are more anchors like Brian Stelter, but the women. You're. I think Kieran's exactly right. We are judged by a different standard because society has a different standard mm -hmm. for women but I really believe that we can't I think it's crazy to just get so focused on this because we have come a very long way there are women today 
doing serious news reporting. As you said, they're covering wars, they're covering the State Department, they're not only covering the White House, they're putting themselves at risk. And, and I think it's, I think we make too much if we sit and worry too much about, about how women look. And I, I think, yes, there are going to be executives in news organizations who worry about it, but I think women have to take a deep breath and think, you know, what am I doing here? Am I here to be a reporter, to gather the news, to make sure it gets out? and do it the best job I can. And if that's what you're trying to do, that's what ultimately is going to matter. Do you ever look at women in television, someone on a local broadcast or something, and think, my God, what are they wearing? Of course. We're, I mean, everyone does that. But, I mean, it's for guys, too. I, what I laugh at is um, I mentor. What do you mean it's for guys, too? Well, I mean, okay, I'll give the you The only example. real feedback this I've gotten is that I wore glasses when I was first right. in green, and then a CNN executive said, I like you better without glasses. That's really the only kind of feedback I've had to face, so to speak. What I mean is, I thought it was interesting when Anderson Cooper was covering the aftermath of the earthquake in Haiti. And this guy is in 100 degree heat for days on end. You can't really shower. The, one of the articles was Anderson Cooper uh, war, uh, war covered chic with a tight black t shirt on. Right. And right. I'm thinking, well, what else is he going to wear? I mean, sweat stains. You know, he's wearing a black t shirt. You have to take it with a grain of salt, like, like Judy said. You have to say, you know, I have enough confidence in myself and I believe that what I'm saying is relevant and hopefully informative. But there is an element of attractiveness, I mean, that you have to have. And by that, I don't mean beauty. I mean, you have to have uh, either an authenticity about you or a relatability so that, I mean, it's TV and it's TV news. And if the ratings aren't good, meaning people aren't attracted to you, I mean, they use the term attract viewers. And if people aren't attracted to your persona, your, your your person, whether it has to do with looks or how you talk or what you say, then where are we? Well, there is a difference here about outlets. Since, Judy, you're at PBS, is it a luxury to not have to be thinking about ratings uh, every 15 minutes in the way that CNN and other networks look at ratings? Well, clearly we want an audience. We want people to watch the PBS NewsHour. Gwen and I are very focused on uh, putting on the best program we can every night and feel you know, very blessed to be the first two women anchoring a national newscast. But it, no, it's not the same as commercial pressure, where every morning there's a lot of focus on the part of executives to what were the ratings, you know, every 15 minutes, every five minutes the night before. So it is a different atmosphere. But that doesn't mean that we don't care about an audience. We mm -hmm. do. But it's the content that matters. And I would argue that it's the content on commercial television that matters. Ultimately, people are going to come back to you if you're doing a good job, if you're getting the story right. Uh, if you did a good interview, if you, if you had a good exchange with somebody you were talking to and you shone some light on a story, uh, and whether you're covering a hurricane or a, an election or an immigration crisis right now, what matters is the story. So I, you know, I, I have long believed that there's too much focus on, uh, on, on how we look. It's, it's inevitably part of the job because it's television. It's a story when Hoda and Kathy go, we're not wearing makeup today. Or when Robin Roberts took her wig off after she um, went through chemotherapy and she was a cancer survivor. I mean, there is a huge amount of emphasis put on looks. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a, a horrible thing, but it's definitely trying. Let me go back to you, what you were describing about what you've heard feedback-wise. Uh, can you tell us a specific story about what that's been like in a, in a newsroom in the past? Sure. I mean, how much time do you have? Um, no, I, mean, I remember e even when I was younger, I was 22 when I was uh, an anchor at uh, the coveted um, NBC affiliate in Erie, Pennsylvania, which was actually really a great news town. Hmm. And it, they wanted me to look older, so I had shoulder pads out to here. You remember those days? And my hair was, you know, poofed out. I show pictures just for fun for my friends. I'm like, that is not you. But there was, you know, a, for me the problem was is that they felt because I was so young, even though they knew I was smart and I knew what I was talking about, um, that I appeared to be too young. Mm. When you were at Fox News, was there more of a focus on your looks than there were at other places? Yeah, one of my favorite quotes ever. Never mind, I can't say it. I can't. I just realized I can't say it. I'll you tell you later. No, I mean it's the joke was we should um, we should all buy stock in Mac lip gloss because 
we go through it. We used to call the hair and makeup um, studio, we used to call it the magic shop because we'd go, <laughs> we'd drag ourselves in at two in the morning and come out looking completely different. I, you know, I, I, here at CNN, I feel like I go into makeup and they're giving me a thousand milligrams of confidence, you know, because See? they're making me up. That's the only great equalizer about television, though, is I have to, I get to sit next to guys and watch you guys get makeup on, too, That's and get airbrushed. Point. Judy Woodruff, Kieran Tetri, thank you both for joining me. Great pleasure. Here. Thanks.